Thank you for joining us today. You've had an incredible near-death experience that you'd like to share with our audience. Can you start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Of course. My name is Hannah Caldwell, I'm 60 years old, and I live in a small town in Ohio. I've been married to my husband John for 38 years, and we have three grown children and five grandchildren. I've worked as an elementary school teacher for most of my life. What brought me here today is an experience I had two months ago that completely changed my life. Can you tell us what happened? It was a normal Tuesday morning. I was getting ready for work, making breakfast in the kitchen. Suddenly, I felt an intense pain in my chest. At first, I thought it was just heartburn, but it quickly got worse. I called out to John, who was upstairs, but I couldn't catch my breath. The last thing I remember is collapsing on the kitchen floor. That sounds terrifying. What happened next? The next thing I knew, I was looking down at my own body on the kitchen floor. John was kneeling beside me, frantically performing CPR. I could see the panic in his eyes, but I felt completely calm. It was the strangest sensation, I knew I had left my body, but I wasn't scared at all. So you were aware of what was happening around you? Yes, absolutely. I watched as the paramedics arrived and took over from John. They were working so hard to revive me, but I felt detached from it all. Then, suddenly, everything around me started to fade away. The kitchen, John, the paramedics, it all disappeared into a bright, warm light. Can you describe what you experienced next? It's hard to put into words, but I'll do my best. The moment my heart stopped, I felt myself leave my body. It was the strangest sensation, like stepping out of a heavy coat. Suddenly I felt weightless and free. I looked down and could see my body lying there on the sidewalk, but I felt completely detached from it. Then I was enveloped in the most beautiful, warm light I've ever seen. It was brighter than the sun, but it didn't hurt my eyes to look at it. I felt drawn towards the light, like it was gently pulling me in. As I moved towards it, I had this overwhelming sense of peace and love wash over me. All fear and pain were gone. I just felt, complete. That's amazing. What happened as you moved into the light? As I got closer to the source of the light, I began to make out a figure standing there. It was Jesus. I know that might sound crazy to some people, but I'm telling you, I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that it was him. He was more beautiful and majestic than I ever could have imagined. His face was radiant, full of love and compassion. He smiled at me and held out his hand. When I took his hand, suddenly we were transported to what I can only describe as the outskirts of heaven. We were standing on what looked like a path made of transparent gold. All around us were the most vibrant colors I've ever seen, colors that don't even exist on earth. Everything was shimmering and alive. The air itself seemed to sparkle. That's an incredible description. Did Jesus speak to you? Yes, he did. His voice was unlike anything I've ever heard, deep and resonant, yet gentle and soothing at the same time. He said, Welcome. I have something I want to show you. Then he began leading me down the golden path towards what looked like an enormous, shining city in the distance. As we walked, Jesus explained that he was going to give me a glimpse of what worship in heaven is really like. He told me that many people on earth have misconceptions about heaven, thinking it's just sitting on clouds playing harps or something boring like that. He wanted me to see the truth so I could share it with others. Wow, that's profound. Can you tell us what Jesus showed you about worship in heaven? It was absolutely mind-blowing. As we approached the heavenly city, I could hear the most beautiful music imaginable. It was like thousands of perfect symphonies all blended together into one glorious song. The melody seemed to resonate through my entire being. When we entered the city, I was awestruck by the beauty. The buildings were made of precious gems that sparkled in every color. The streets were paved with gold so pure it was transparent. And everywhere I looked there were flowers and trees more lovely than anything on earth. But what struck me most were the people, if you can call them that. There were countless multitudes of beings, some looked human and others were clearly angels. They came in every size, shape and color imaginable. And they were all engaged in the most joyful, exuberant worship I've ever seen. Can you describe the worship you witnessed? It was unlike any church service or worship experience I've ever had on earth. There was a palpable energy in the air, like electricity, but warm and inviting. Everyone was completely focused on praising God. There were no distractions, no wandering thoughts, no checking watches or phones. Just pure, uninhibited adoration. 
Some were singing at the top of their lungs, others were dancing with abandoned joy. I saw beings prostrate on the ground in reverence while others lifted their hands high in the air. There were instruments I've never seen before producing the most heavenly music. And in the center of it all was the throne of God, shining so brightly I could hardly look at it. The amazing thing was how diverse yet unified it all was. You had these multitudes from every nation and tongue, yet they were all worshipping in perfect harmony. It was a beautiful tapestry of praise. That sounds incredible. Did you participate in the worship yourself? Yes, and it was the most amazing thing I've ever experienced. As Jesus and I drew closer to the throne, I felt this overwhelming urge to fall on my face in worship. It wasn't out of fear or obligation, I just couldn't help myself. The glory and majesty of God was so powerful, so beautiful, that worship was the only possible response. As I bowed before the throne, I felt waves of God's love wash over me. It was the purest, strongest love imaginable, so intense it almost hurt, but in the best possible way. I found myself weeping with joy and crying out praises. Words of adoration just flowed out of me effortlessly. I had perfect clarity about who God is and how worthy He is of all praise. What amazed me was how personal it felt even in the midst of that vast multitude. I had this sense that God was intimately aware of me, that He knew everything about me and loved me completely. I felt fully known and fully loved in a way I've never experienced before. That's beautiful. Did you have any other interactions or experiences during your time in heaven? Yes, there was so much more. Jesus took me on a tour of sorts, showing me different aspects of heavenly worship. We visited what seemed like a massive library, where people were studying the mysteries of God and the universe. Their faces lit up with wonder and awe as they discovered new facets of God's character and creation. We passed by a giant feast, like a wedding banquet, where multitudes were celebrating and rejoicing together. The atmosphere was one of pure joy and camaraderie. Everyone seemed to know each other intimately, sharing stories and laughing together. I saw fields of flowers where people were creating the most beautiful art and music, all as an act of worship. Their creation seemed to come alive, adding to the symphony of praise rising up to God. We even visited what looked like a giant laboratory where scientists and inventors were exploring the wonders of God's creation. They were making incredible discoveries and innovations, all while praising the genius of the Creator. It sounds like heaven is a very active, dynamic place. Did anything surprise you about what you saw? Yes, definitely. I think what surprised me most was how, natural it all felt. I had always imagined heaven as this ethereal, cloudy place where everyone just sort of floated around. But it was so much more real and tangible than that. Everything was familiar yet indescribably more beautiful and perfect than anything on earth. I was also surprised by how diverse the worship was. It wasn't just singing or praying. Everything was an act of worship, creating, learning, fellowshipping, even just basking in God's presence. And everyone worshipped in their own unique way while still being in perfect unity. Another thing that amazed me was how time seemed to work differently. I felt like I was there for both an instant and an eternity simultaneously. And the worship never got boring or repetitive. Each moment brought new revelations of God's greatness that fueled even more passionate praise. That's fascinating. Did Jesus explain anything more to you about the nature of heavenly worship? Yes, he did. As we walked, Jesus told me that worship in heaven is so much more than just singing songs or saying prayers. He explained that true worship is simply enjoying and glorifying God in everything. It's living in constant awareness of His presence and responding to His beauty and goodness. He said that on earth, our worship is often hindered by our limited understanding, our selfish desires, and the distractions of the world. But in heaven, all those barriers are removed. We see God clearly for who He is, and we can't help but worship Him with our whole being. Jesus also explained that worship in heaven is deeply transformative. As we behold God's glory, we become more and more like Him. It's an endless cycle of seeing God, praising Him, being changed by Him, and then seeing even more of His beauty as a result. That's profound. Did Jesus give you any specific message to bring back? Yes, He did. As our time together was coming to an end, Jesus looked at me with those eyes full of love and said, I'm sending you back now. Your time hasn't come yet, you still have work to do on earth. But I want you to remember what you've seen here and share it with others. Tell them that heaven is more wonderful than they can imagine, and that true life is found in worshipping me. 
Encourage my people to seek me wholeheartedly and to practice my presence every day. The more they learn to worship me on earth, the more prepared they'll be for the glories of heaven. Then he smiled and said, And don't forget, I'm always with you, even when you can't see me. The same worship you experienced here is available to you every moment through my spirit. Live in that reality. Wow, what an incredible message. How did you feel when you realized you had to go back? To be honest, I was heartbroken at first. Heaven was so amazing, more wonderful than I can put into words. The thought of leaving that perfect peace and joy to return to the pain and struggles of earth was devastating. For a moment, I wanted to beg Jesus to let me stay. But then I looked in his eyes and was filled with a sense of purpose. I understood that he was entrusting me with an important mission, to share what I had seen and experienced with others. I felt his love sustain me and give me courage for the journey back. As Jesus gave me one last embrace, I felt myself being pulled back through that tunnel of light. Suddenly, I was back in my body, gasping for air as the paramedics worked frantically over me. The pain and fear came rushing back, but along with it was this unshakable sense of peace and hope. I knew that what I had experienced was real, and that it would change my life forever. You mentioned diverse forms of worship in heaven. Could you elaborate on that? Of course. What struck me was the sheer variety of worship I witnessed. It wasn't just singing or bowing, though there was plenty of that. I saw beings engaged in what looked like interpretive dance, their movement so graceful and expressive it brought tears to my eyes. Others were creating art, painting, sculpting, even what looked like writing poetry, all as acts of worship. There were some who seemed to be engaged in intellectual pursuits, studying and discussing the deep mysteries of God with looks of wonder and awe on their faces. It was like they were constantly discovering new facets of God's character and creativity, and each discovery led to fresh praise. I saw what looked like scientists and inventors, exploring the intricacies of God's creation. As they unravel the complexities of the universe, they would burst into spontaneous praise, marveling at God's wisdom and power. There were even those who seemed to be serving others as a form of worship. They moved through the crowds with joy, attending to the needs of others with such love and grace that it was clearly an act of devotion to God. And the music, oh, the music was beyond anything I've ever heard. It wasn't just one style either. I heard what sounded like classical symphonies, joyous African rhythms, Asian melodies, and even something that reminded me of rock music, all blending together in this incredible, harmonious sound of praise. That's fascinating. You mentioned that this worship had a transformative effect. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, it was one of the most profound aspects of what I experienced. Jesus explained to me that as we worship and behold God's glory, we are gradually transformed to become more like Him. It's like what the Apostle Paul wrote about being changed from glory to glory. I could actually see this happening. As beings engaged in worship, they seemed to glow brighter and brighter. It was as if the more they praised God, the more they reflected His character. Their love grew deeper, their joy more profound, their peace more settled. Jesus told me that this process continues for eternity. There's always more of God to discover, always new depths of His love and wisdom to explore. And with each new revelation, we are changed to be more like Him. This transformation isn't just about becoming morally better, though that's part of it. It's about becoming more fully who we were created to be. As we worship, our unique qualities, the aspects of God's image that we specifically reflect, become more pronounced. It's like worship polishes us until we shine with the particular facet of God's glory that we were designed to display. That's beautiful. You also mentioned the universal and unified nature of heavenly worship. Can you expand on that? Absolutely. This was one of the most awe-inspiring aspects of what I saw. The worshipers came from every nation, tribe, people, and language, just like the Bible describes. I saw people who looked like they were from every era of history and every corner of the globe. But it wasn't just humans. There were angels of various ranks and other beings I couldn't even begin to describe. And somehow, all of creation seemed to be involved too. It was as if the stars, planets, and even the elements themselves were joining in the worship. What amazed me was how all of this diversity blended into perfect unity. Despite the different languages and styles of worship, everything harmonized beautifully. It was like a vast, cosmic orchestra, each part playing its unique role but all coming together in a magnificent symphony of praise. I saw people who I suspect had been enemies on earth, 
now worshiping side by side in perfect love and harmony. All the divisions that separate us here, race, nationality, denomination, social status, none of that mattered. Everyone was united in their love for God and for each other. Jesus explained to me that this unity doesn't erase our individuality. Rather, it enhances it. Each person's unique experiences and perspective brought something special to the worship, making the overall tapestry of praise even richer and more beautiful. That's truly amazing. Now, you've mentioned how this experience has impacted your life on earth. Has it changed how you approach worship in your daily life? Absolutely, in so many ways. First, I've come to see that worship isn't just something we do in church on Sundays. It's a lifestyle, an attitude of the heart that can infuse every moment of every day. I try to approach everything I do as an act of worship now. Whether I'm teaching my students, cooking dinner for my family, or just enjoying a beautiful sunset, I try to do it with a heart full of gratitude and praise to God. I've also become much more intentional about setting aside time for focused worship. I start each day with a time of prayer and praise, often using the Psalms as a guide. I've joined the worship team at my church and I find myself spontaneously singing praise songs throughout the day. But it goes beyond just singing or praying. I've started to see my work as worship. I put more effort into my lesson plans, trying to reflect God's creativity and love for learning. I've taken up painting as a way to express my praise visually. I even see things like keeping my home clean or taking care of my health as acts of worship, stewarding the gifts God has given me. I've also developed a deeper appreciation for the wonders of God's creation. I spend more time in nature now, marveling at the intricate design of a flower or the vastness of the night sky. These moments often lead me into spontaneous praise. Perhaps the biggest change is that I'm much more aware of God's presence throughout my day. I constantly remind myself that the same God I saw on the throne in heaven is right here with me. This awareness turns even mundane tasks into opportunities for worship. It sounds like your experience has really transformed your understanding of worship. You mentioned earlier that heaven is a physical place with various activities. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, that was one of the biggest surprises for me. I always imagined heaven as this ethereal, cloudy place where we just float around. But what I saw was so much more tangible and dynamic. The heaven I glimpsed was a real place, with substance and variety. There were buildings of incredible beauty, streets, gardens, and what looked like vast open spaces for gathering and celebration. I saw areas that looked like giant libraries or universities, where people were engaged in study and learning. There were what appeared to be laboratories and workshops where new things were being discovered and created. I saw massive amphitheaters where performances and presentations were taking place. There were feasts happening, with tables laden with food that looked and smelled amazing. People were eating, drinking, and engaging in joyful conversation. I saw places that looked like art galleries and museums, showcasing incredible creations. There were spaces that reminded me of parks or gardens, but more beautiful than anything on earth, where people were enjoying nature and each other's company. And everywhere, there was this sense of purpose and joy. Everyone seemed to be doing exactly what they were created to do, and loving every moment of it. Work didn't seem to be a burden but a delight. Jesus explained to me that in heaven, we'll continue to learn, create, explore, and grow. We'll be actively involved in the ongoing work of God's kingdom. It's not a place of passive rest, but of exciting, purposeful activity, all of which is a form of worship. That's a fascinating picture of heaven. You also mentioned a powerful scene in the throne room. Could you describe that in more detail? The throne room, even now, I struggle to find words to adequately describe it. As we approached, the worship grew more intense. The very air seemed to pulse with energy and light. The room itself was vast beyond imagining, able to accommodate countless multitudes. The walls, if you could call them that, seemed to be made of pure light in constant motion, shimmering with colors I've never seen before. But the focal point was the throne. It was raised up, massive and majestic. It appeared to be made of something like sapphire, but alive and glowing. Surrounding it was a rainbow that shone like an emerald. And on the throne, words fail me here. I couldn't look directly at the figure on the throne, the glory was too intense. It was like trying to stare at the sun, only a million times brighter. All I could perceive was a form of indescribable power and beauty, radiating pure love and holiness. 
Around the throne were other beings, I believe they were the living creatures and elders described in Revelation. They were continuously crying out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, and is, and is to come. The presence of God was so powerful, so overwhelming, that I felt I should have been utterly consumed by it. And yet, at the same time, I felt more fully alive and more myself than I've ever been. It was terrifying and thrilling and beautiful all at once. I understood then why the Bible says that no one can see God and live. Not because God would destroy us, but because our earthly bodies simply can't contain the experience. It would be like trying to channel the power of a sun through a small wire, we would simply overload. What struck me most was the love that emanated from the throne. It was a love of such intensity and purity that it brought indescribable joy but also a kind of exquisite pain, like your heart could burst from being so fully known and so completely loved. You mentioned that your experience aligns with scripture. Can you elaborate on that? Sure. After I recovered, I spent a lot of time studying what the Bible says about heaven and the afterlife. I was amazed to find so many parallels between what I experienced and what scripture describes. The book of Revelation talks about New Jerusalem, with its streets of gold and gates of pearl. It describes multitudes from every nation gathered around God's throne in worship. The Psalms are full of beautiful imagery about the joy of being in God's presence. Jesus himself talked about heaven as a place he was preparing for us. He emphasized that eternal life is about knowing God intimately. Paul wrote about how we will see God face to face and know him fully. Even some of the prophets like Isaiah and Ezekiel had visions of heaven that align with aspects of what I saw. The Bible doesn't give us a complete picture of heaven, but what it does reveal matches perfectly with my experience. Of course, I know that my brief glimpse of heaven doesn't add anything to scripture or supersede it in any way. But I feel like it helped bring the Bible's descriptions to life for me in a new way. That's really interesting. As we wrap up, what would you say is the main message you want people to take away from your experience? I think the main thing I want people to understand is that heaven is real, and it's more amazing than we can possibly imagine. God's love for us is so much greater and more personal than most of us realize. He truly desires a close, intimate relationship with each of us. I want to encourage people not to wait until they die to start experiencing the reality of God's presence. We can have a taste of heaven right here on earth when we learn to worship God with our whole hearts and live in constant awareness of His presence. I also want to emphasize the importance of being ready for eternity. None of us knows when our time will come. I certainly didn't expect to nearly die that Saturday morning. We need to make sure we've put our faith in Jesus and are living in right relationship with God. Lastly, I want to give people hope. Whatever struggles or pain they're facing in this life, it's just temporary. There's an eternity of joy and peace waiting for those who trust in Jesus. Knowing that can help us face even the darkest times with courage and faith.